Welcome back here to Hoax Bluff High School. Second semifinal of the night coming up here at the Patrick Ball Memorial Classic presented by Samco Express Marts here on the Friday Night Network. I'm Grady Sapp alongside Jim, alongside Jim Jacobs and the host school, the host Bluff in, uh, Eagles tonight. <laughs> I'm thinking Indy is the host Bluff Eagles tonight will host the St. Clair County Saints in semifinal number two. And the winner of this one will get to face off against Aniana tomorrow night for the championship of the tournament and a great first game tonight. And I, I have a feeling that we're going to see a good one here in round two or semifinal number two as well. We know what we get when we see Hoax Bluff because we've seen them every year for the last number of years. They are a tough, tenacious basketball team. You know, Grady, I, I tried to think of a great way to describe this team to our viewers, and it's kind of like watching somebody pick cotton. It's just deliberate. Nothing happens really fast. They just they just work at you, you know? And they're really good, Jim, at making you play at their pace and their style of basketball. Yeah, that and that's probably the best description, Grady, is you're not going to force them into something they don't want to do. No, they dictate the game, and... Uh, that, well, we have seen them beat teams that they had no business beating. And it was just, and it was a com not not necessarily that they didn't have the talent to beat those teams, Grady, but they had the game that those teams couldn't deal with. Right. Michael Fisher is a starter. You see the lineups being introduced for St. Clair County. Also, Daniel Bruce. He is number three there. Uh, next up for the Saints, Grayson Beatty, number 22. Sanders is going to be Garrett Sanders. He is number 21 and final starter tonight for the Saints is number 24. That is Quante Price. And of course, there you see the coach's name on your screen. Kevin Connor. Kevin Connor. And now the homestanding Hoax Bluff Golden, or not Golden, oh, but just Eagles. Just Eagles, yeah. <laughs> just, a, just a good old bird. They're a good old bird. There you go. <laughs> Hoax Bluff, number 10 is Braden Hill. We'll start tonight for the Eagles. Number 33 tonight is Donovan Greaves. And uh, we've seen this team play as a, as a unit for a while now. And you're in for a treat to watch them play. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're looking for an NBA-style up-and-down-the-floor game, this ain't it. No, nope. Jay Stewart, <laughs> the starter tonight for the Eagles, as is Landon Johnson. And number 45 tonight is Hayden Lipscomb for the Eagles. Their only loss of the season, Grady, kind of came early uh, to Piedmont, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Well, both teams went pretty deep in the playoffs, obviously uh, getting knocked out. I think Coach Bluff in the third round, and, of course, Piedmont in the semifinals in the state. So both of them played football well into November. Mm -hmm before getting knocked out. So they're just now really starting to probably find their rhythm hoax bluff as far as the basketball goes. Yeah, but they've reeled off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cents. And of course, St. Clair County, another team that made it all the way to the semifinals in the state yeah. before losing to Briarwood Christian in the 5A semifinal. They had their hands full with Elkmont here last night, Grady, trailing at the half before coming back to win by about 10, I think yeah, it was. 44-33, I be believe. And the opening tip going to be controlled by the Eagles. And that'll be Donovan Greaves with it. Going to swing it over now to Lip Johnson. Comes Hoax, back to Greaves. Hoax Bluff in the home white yep. with the green trim. Johnson bags a three right off the bat. Good start for Landon Johnson and the Eagles. And here comes pressure. And they will do this all night long. And you'll have to beat it if you're St. Clair County. And it forces a turnover. Johnson made the three, makes the steal, comes back. Fakes the pass, misses the layup, and the rebound pulled down underneath by St. Clair County. And coming back quickly now, Michael Fisher with it gets it into front court, and the Saints will have their first look at it, real look at it offensively. Outside for three, trying to tie this one up. The shot is no good by Grayson Beatty, and the rebound on the backside for Hoax Bluff, controlled there by Jay Stewart. Yeah, one and done there on the boards for St. Clair County. Hoax Bluff had four white jerseys in the lane at the backboard when that shot went up. Here's Greaves outside for three. That one will not go, and we get a foul underneath, and I think you're going to get an over-the-back call on St. Clair County. Want to thank our first quarter sponsor for tonight's game, Morella's Winery, here in Hoax Bluff. Ball tipped away on the inbounds attempt. Knocking it out of bounds was Michael Fisher. And this is quality. I mean, it's grown right here. Right here in Hoax Bluff. Yep. Johnson with a shot, won't go. Rebounded by Fisher on the backside for St. Clair County. 
Saints looking for their first points of the night. Fisher cut off over there, comes back, swinging around the horn, and now they go down inside for the first time. Tough shot on the baseline is no good by Price. And Hoax Bluff, once again, Johnson will come out of there with it. Fires it ahead for Greaves. And Greaves will give it right back to Johnson. And get it back outside for Donovan Greaves. And Hoax Bluff will set up once more. Eagles hit the first shot they put up tonight. And since then, both teams have been rather quiet. Lob it inside. Going to the big man down low. Has it knocked out of his hands. It'll stay Hoax Bluff basketball. Trying to get it inside for the first time tonight to Hayden Lipscomb. You know, Grady, and you kind of get the impression that either one of these two teams going to have their hands full with Aniana tomorrow yeah. night. Aniana, really good basketball team. Yeah, I'm impressed with them. Well coached and uh, came back from a deficit tonight, fought their way back to take the lead. I mean, if that, was, if that was a prize fight, yeah. we saw an eight count. Yeah, we did. You know, and, and they got up. Yep. Impressed with the way they came back. Didn't have their best stuff for sure in the first half. Hoax Bluff now, we're seeing them settle into that very deliberate style that we talked about in the opening. That yeah, they don't mind playing a minute before they shoot it. Well, they'll run a quarter out before you know it. Going back inside to Lipscomb, and we get a lane violation, I believe. Well, we get a foul called in there, a push blocking foul inside. And, of course, with our coverage of White Plains basketball here on FNN, this is the team that's leading that area right now. And they've already got big road wins against Jacksonville and Cherokee County, Grady. And there's the bank shot by Hayden Lipscomb, got free inside. And those are impressive wins. We've seen Cherokee County already. We've seen Jacksonville already this season. Two pretty good basketball teams. Yeah, I still think the best quarter of basketball I've seen was by Cherokee County at yeah, Glencoe. 26, I think, in the first quarter. Yep. But now Cherokee County's been defeated twice because Jacksonville beat them too. So uh, certainly Hoax Bluff and... Jacksonville up top right now in that area. And again, the Eagles just take their time. Greaves gets an open look, buries a three. And then right back on the defensive end of the floor, just making St. Clair County work for everything. Lob it across here for St. Clair County to Grayson Beatty. Shot from the outside, put up by Sanders. No good, rebound by Landon Johnson on the backside. He'll go coast to coast, misses the layup, draws the foul. He'll get to the line and shoot two for the Eagles. Great work there by the big guy. And, boy, it's just, this is textbook Hoax Wolf basketball. <laughs> You're sitting here, and you don't feel like really much has happened, and you look up, and they're up 8 nothing. Make nine it 9. Nothing. Yep. If you... And if you blink, it'll be the fourth quarter. Yeah, because they will. Uh, they They'll will, put you to sleep. Yeah, they shorten the basketball game. They are deliberate with a capital D. And it's a style that works for them. Misses the second, but the rebound for Donovan Greaves. Gets it back outside for Hill, and Hill will send it back topside, and here's Greaves with it once again for Hoax Bluff. Johnson, and back upside to Jay Stewart, back to Johnson, and to Stewart over on the left side. And Hoax Bluff just content to work it around the perimeter, wait till they get the shot they like, and then they'll put it up. And so that's the, exactly what they're doing. Yep, there's a the turnover. Turn it over, though. And coming quickly as Fisher the other way puts up the shot, but it's not going to. I think the foul occurred before the shot. Yeah, I, I hope they're not going to send him to the. No, nah, the refs walking to the baseline. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, baseline out for the yeah. Saints. Fisher did a good job throwing it up, just tried to get lucky with that, but it, the official said, no, nah, you weren't in the act. Kick it back outside. Here's a look for three. Good. Got it. Eric Heflin with the first points of the night for the Saints. That ball just settled into those nets so softly. Now Hoax Bluff goes back to work. Hill dropping it down inside to Lipscomb. Loses the ball, puts it up anyway, and will not get the roll. Fights, gets a rebound, puts it back up, misses it again, tipped out. And off the glass the third time's a charm. Braden Hill gets the two-pointer. And that's another thing Hoax Bluff does really well, Grady, is work offensive glass. Yep, and here's that constant pressure as you work the ball up the floor. Got it down inside. That was a nice lead pass and an easy basket there for Price. 
So the Saints with back-to-back -back trips where they knock down some points. Boy, Price so lucky that ball didn't come off the back of the rim. Yeah. Because you teach to use the glass on those. Here's Hill. Swings it back over to Stewart, and Hill will get it back. And, and come back up topside for Greaves. Stewart going down baseline, Landon Johnson. He's got a couple of shots in the travel there. He turns it over. Couldn't make up his mind what he wanted to do. So we get our first substitutions of the ball game for the Eagles into the game is Ashton Gulledge, number two, and also in number 22 is Cole Contras. Eric Heflin now. With the basketball, get it ahead to Fisher, and the Saints going to do with a cross-court pass. Dangerous one going up. Daniel Bruce with the grab. There is the three-pointer outside. No good, but the foul as Michael Fisher now will go to the line and shoot three. And the question becomes, Jim, as we talk about every year in basketball, can anybody make three free throws in a row? <laughs> You'll probably jinx him, Grady. Probably. Well, I, I didn't say he could do it. It's just... Seems to be a hard make. Nope, nope. nope. That, that settles that quickly. <laughs> yep, we we can move on now. Yep. <laughs> it's rare. It is. It is rare. And the second one rattles out. So, so Michael Fisher has missed two in a row. He's got one more by virtue of the three-point shot, and he missed them all three. And Landon Johnson will clear the rebound for Hoax Bluff, and quickly is Contras coming back up the floor with it. Into the ball game for the first time, Cole Contras. And he's looking down inside. It wasn't there, so they move it to the outside, driving baseline and dishing the ball off. Fouled before the pass. That was a nice pass by Braden Hill. Had Landon Johnson wide open for a point-blank layup, but the foul before that will save that for St. Clair County. Johnson gets it in for Contras. And Hoax Bluff just going to move it back around that perimeter another time. Lob it inside for Lipscomb. Puts up the shot, gets the foul. He's got a chance for the hoop and harm. And we see lots of people knock down these. Yeah. <laughs> Hayden Lipscomb. He's had a nice first quarter. Got four points here in the quarter. Now Hoax Bluff trying to extend the lead to nine. Free throw is up and good for Hayden Lipscomb. Give him five here in the opening quarter. Now St. Clair County working against the pressure. And there's the steal. And the steal right back <laughs> by the Saints. And now feed it down low. Give it back outside for Daniel Bruce. Bruce double teamed over in the corner. Finds his teammate Eric Heflin. Walk it out and set it up, yeah. young man. <laughs> This one's been close enough to a train wreck since it crossed midcourt. It has been. <laughs> Heflin lob it across Ooh. and dropping it down low and back out. Grayson Beatty touched it. Now get it inside to Quante Price, and the shot is missed underneath there. And the rebound, Hayden Lipscomb. And here come the Eagles. As Gulledge had it, got it to Contras. Now Gulledge with it, going to pot it off outside. Braden Hill, he's got a three. Give him five in the quarter. And just like that, it's a 12-point lead for the Eagles. And there's a foul on Landon Johnson. Went for the steal, ended up in harm's way. Well, I think he thought he was going to set, set, set himself and take a charge. Yeah. But then he kind of got, got his feet crossed up and got out of position and got, got the foul. Heading into Christmas weekend. You ready? Yeah. I'm good. I've only got one more thing to buy. Then you're actually going to buy that, so I'm, I'm oh. good with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basketball paychecks pay for other gifts. You know what I mean? I hear you. Here come the Eagles as the miss by St. Clair County on the other end, and Hoax Bluff right back to work. Stewart has it well outside, and... Coach Bluff will be ready to set up that offense and just slowly, methodically move it around until they get what they want. Gulledge outside, going down low for Johnson. Double teamed in there, fights through it, and loses the ball. Gulledge, though, will save it. Contras now has it, and Stewart goes back down to Peyton Moore. Now, 
Coach Wolf will reset, Jim. They ran about 40 seconds off the clock this possession. And I think unless they get a good look, Grady, with a cut or something, they're going to take the last shot. Yeah, I think you're right. This, this is the kind of team that can give any team trouble because they – And if you get behind to them, yes, you, 10 is like 20. Yes, and right now they've got a 12-point lead. They are some kind of tough when they lead. And they're going to hold for the final shot. Inside to Johnson. Hesitates off the glass. Too strong and out of bounds off of, I think, St. Clair County. It is, so Hoax Bluff will have it with four seconds remaining. So they'll get one more shot at it. If they can drop a three, it's a 15-point game. But now if you like fast basketball games, this is a great team to watch because it don't take long. <laughs> and there's a th almost a throw away, but it rescued by Gullich. Gets the layup, and just like that, at the end of one, it is a 19-5 advantage for the homestanding Eagles here on the Friday Night Network. Every day is a great day to stop in a Samco Express Mart. You'll find plenty of snacks to choose from, and Samco has all your favorite drink brands, all nice and cold. You'll find those last-minute light grocery items you need, and a great variety of grab-and-go brands that's sure to cure any case of the munchies. There's lots of candy, mints, and gum, too. Make sure you fuel up before or after the game. With over 30 locations in the area, there's always one close by. Samco Express Mart. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. First quarter in the books. We're about ready for second quarter action here from Hoax Bluff High School. The host school with a great first quarter, and they've got a 14-point advantage as we start quarter number two. Grady Sapp alongside Jim Jacobs. It's the Patrick Ball Memorial Classic presented by Samco Express Marts here at Hoax Bluff. St. Clair County only five points in that opening quarter, and uh, they got to get something going offensively out to Fisher going inside now and spinning, and a shot is short by Quante Price. One and done. And the rebound once again by Braden Hill and the Eagles. They just lull you to sleep, and the next thing you know, they, they hang 19 or 20 on you in the quarter, and you don't know where the quarter went. Stewart drop it back down for Contras and throws it away. Rare turnover there by the Eagles. Michael Fisher comes out of there with it. But even with the turnover, Grady, it took him 40 seconds to do it. Yeah. And now here's an open look for three outside. That one's good. Boy, they needed that. Daniel Bruce, his first points of the night. Only five in that first quarter for... St. Clair County on the other end. Shot is missed by Jay Stewart. Fisher comes out of there with the tip ball. Here come the Saints. And lob it across. Bruce will track it down. He's baseline cut off now. And they get a timeout taken across the way. Quick timeout taken by St. Clair County to try and save that possession. In the first quarter for Hoax Bluff, it was Ashton Gulledge with two. Five for Braden Hill, four for Landon Johnson, three for Donovan Greaves, and five for Hayden Lipscomb for that total of 19. For St. Clair County, doesn't take long. Three for Eric Heflin, two for Quante Price, and that was it for the Saints. Only five points in the first quarter. Wow. Yeah, you're not going to win many games scoring five points in the first quarter. No. And we talked about the deliberate nature of Hoax Bluff, but and, and you've alluded to this a couple of times, one and done, one and done. They give you one shot, they generally get the, op, the defensive rebound, and that's it. So and then they're going to take you up the floor, and they're going to knock 30 to 45 seconds off the clock. Right. Unless they've got an open look. Or unless you play good defense and they're content to take two minutes off the clock or yeah. three minutes. It doesn't matter. So St. Clair County will maintain possession of the ball after that timeout. They get it into Fisher and they'll reset the offense. And here comes the trap from Hoax Bluff. And St. Clair County's going to have to work it around. They do a good job getting it down inside Owsley with the miss. I'm not sure if Hoax Bluff got a piece of that. Or if he was just too deep. Yeah, it may have been too deep. Joven Owsley with the miss. Here come the Eagles back to work. Up by 11. And we're going to get the foul. Well, nope, he got on the line. Side, stepped yep. on the sideline. Good defense in there by Quante Price. So it will be St. Clair County. A chance with a successful trip. Get this back down into single digits. 
And there's the pass too far in front of yeah. Owsley. Not a good effort there by Bruce. Yeah, you can't, you can't throw a big man a pass like that, Grady. Most guys can't handle it. It's below his knees. And us big guys just don't have you, soft you hands. Just don't reach down too well, do yeah. you? We don't have soft hands. Stewart outside now for Hoax Bluff. And he'll find Cole Conscious, who is running the ship right now. Stewart outside, open for three. No good. That was a very fast shot for Hoax Bluff. As the shot put up and in by Ashton Gulledge. He made the last bucket of the first quarter, makes the first one of the second quarter for Hoax Bluff. They extend the lead. Fisher coming across near side for Beatty, open for three, puts it up and in. Jason Beatty with a big three for the Saints. Beatty knocking it down. Cut it back to 10. Do the Saints. Cross court it over here to Gulledge and now Contras and now back over to Stewart. And that's more of the possession that I'm used to seeing out of Hoax Bluff. That last one, they shot the ball very quickly. They don't normally do that. Very deliberate inside to Lipscomb, and he's going to be fouled. And had he not been fouled, he caught it behind the defense, and we would have had a run down the lane for an easy shot. And Grady, I know we're a long way from tomorrow night yet, but you talking about two contrasting styles, you're going to have it tomorrow night if this score holds. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's for sure. Of course, it's that case most nights. Yep, as the three won't go down, as it was a good look that time for Greaves, but it just rattled out. So here comes St. Clair County. They can get this back down into single digits, and uh, that's a nice little comeback for them if they can. Just chip away. Grayson Beatty outside for three. That one will not go, and you're going to have over the back. Landon Johnson getting in good position. Draws that foul. See, we're, on, we're what? 4.57. Yeah. I mean, second quarter's half gone. And, you know, possessions become paramount when you're in a game like this because <laughs> you don't you, you get only limited amounts of them. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's like I said, you know, this team is up 10. It's like being down 20. Yeah, because it's going to take – you're just not going to get that many cracks at it. Landon Johnson will be at the line. That's seven fouls now on St. Clair County, and he misses the shot, goes halfway down and comes out. Grayson Beatty with the rebound for the Saints. Gets it to Fisher, back to Beatty, and now come ahead for Heflin, and Heflin's going to take it down baseline. Cut set back up top for Grayson Beatty. The three is good. Got it. Good look. Knocked Nine. it down with a, face in, a hand in his face. And that's a way to get back in the ball game. Nine points in the quarter now for St. Clair County and all on threes. Rip it down to Johnson. Good entry pass. Makes the basket. Draws the foul. That's Hoax Wolf basketball. Yes, it is. Go to the line for the old-fashioned three. And Johnson takes his time, sets himself, and misses the free throw. Rebounded by Price, and the Saints have it. Down by nine. Long pass across court to Beatty. And now he'll go down inside to Price in the lane, blocked in there by Lipscomb. And then cleaned it up. Good work by the big guy. Now back outside to Greaves, and Hoax Bluff will set the offense. Hoax Bluff going, burning some clock. There's a no-look pass for Johnson. A little head fake, shot up, too strong. Rebounded on the backside by Fisher. Michael Fisher with the run out. Drops it across inside to Heflin. Blocked from behind by Johnson, and Lipscomb will clean up the Boy, loose ball. That's just such great defense by Hoax Bluff. Great backside help coming in, trailing the play was Landon Johnson. And there's a knockout by Michael Fisher. And into the game for the first time tonight is Dylan Teague. Number 21 for the Eagles. Landon Johnson will get a breather. 
No, actually make that Ashton Gulledge getting a breather. Landon Johnson is very much still in the ball game. These guys play a lot of minutes for the Eagles. Inside the lifts coming a little off the hands, a little too strong on the pass. It seems like I remember Coach Noah's roster is not but about 10, 11 deep. Yeah, and the long three outside is knocked down by St. Clair County. That's Michael Fisher with a long three. That's four threes in the quarter for the Saints, and they are back within six. Well, Jim, if you don't get a lot of possessions, if you score three every time, it helps. Yeah, you bet. And St. Clair County has shot the ball well here in the second quarter. There's a steal by Fisher behind the back dribble, and he will bring it back out. And now wisely slow it down, and the Saints will set up, hand it off outside, unselfish play, and shot missed by Bruce, and the rebound pulled down now by Hoax Bluff. And the don't, don't say Hoax Bluff is going to run. <laughs> no, no. Johnson's going to fire a three, top of the key, count it. Ooh. That was pretty. Five in the quarter for Johnson. And now here come the Saints. That's Grayson Beatty. A little fake finger roll is no good. And Lipscomb cleans up the miss. You got numbers there, Grady. Why don't you pass that ball? Yeah, would have been a wiser decision. Oh, there is a charge on the baseline. A mistake made there by Braden Hill. Good job getting back on defense, getting your feet set. Don't let them come in the paint. And Hoax Bluff getting ready to substitute Coach Noah. This quarter is sponsored by S&G Machine. Proud to have them on board as a sponsor tonight. And you said that they uh, they make the uh, Auburn fire pit. Huh? Yes, sir. Auburn, Alabama fire pits officially licensed. So they got the logo on them and everything. Nice. As a steal, defense works. The steal created there. And Dylan Teague with the takeaway for Hoax Bluff. You need ornamental iron like the gates of Graceland. Yeah. They do that, they too. They do that, too. Yes, sir. All over the country. Beautiful stuff. From right here in Hoax Bluff, Alabama. Yes, sir. Down to Johnson on the baseline. So are they holding for the final shot with a minute and a half to go? It could happen. They could. Unless they just get the wide open look. They go into Johnson, touch it outside. Wide open. They'll take the open three. Missed is it is Jay Stewart, but the rebound by Johnson, and he's going to be fouled on the way up, I believe. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Young man's had a good night. Got nine points so far here in the now, see, Open when he shot the three, Grady, mm -hmm. he thought about it. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, when you're going to take that shot, it's just got to be natural. Got to catch it and shoot. Yep. And he wasn't sure if he should shoot it yet. Yeah. Because that's not their game. But it was so wide open, you kind of yeah. had to. Yeah, you almost like, well, you're kind of daring me, so, Coach, I guess I ought to take this. And the free throws, one for two for Landon Johnson. And the rebound pulled down by Heflin. And the Saints now have it. Working against the pressure, they get it up court. Bruce has got it now back to Heflin, and they can go into the offense. There's an open look for Fisher. Spots, shoots, too strong, rebounded on the backside by Stewart. Now you can almost count on the last shot here. Yeah, under a minute to go now in the quarter. I mean, this ball game's almost half over. Yeah. Not a lot of whistles in this one. No, pretty well played. First half of ball, long outside three is good oh. by Donovan Greaves, his second three of the night. And it's a 13-point game again, just like that. Now here's Bruce, gets in deep, gets rid of it finally to Heflin. And St. Clair County fighting, and Bruce will save the long court cross-court pass. And those against Hope Bluff will get you burned. Every time. If you keep throwing them. Grayson Beatty back outside. Good ball movement. Bruso will miss the shot. Hoax Bluff has got the rebound. Teague clears it. Landon Johnson has it with seven seconds. So they get one more look. Yep. Lop it down to Lipscomb. Foul on the shot. We'll go to the line and shoot two for the Eagles. Wow. Been a good second half of the second quarter by the Eagles. Yep. They started kind of slow in the quarter, but now they've, they've ramped it on up. Got 11 here in the quarter. Only been outscored by one so far by St. Clair County and they can erase that here with a made free throw by Hayden Lipscomb and the first one rims out. That's the only thing they haven't done well tonight. Shoot free throws. Yep. And I think they're a team that needs to shoot free throws well. It's going to be an important part of a lot of close games for them. Second free throw is good by Lipscomb so he makes one of two. 
St. Clair County does not get a shot off. Hoax Bluff in control of this one at the half over St. Clair County here on the Friday Night Network. Halftime coming up. Stay with us. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds, and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln, for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. H&H &H Home and Truck Accessory Center is your one-stop shop for all your truck accessories. Tires, wheels, lift kits, tonneau covers, toolboxes, step bars, replacement bumpers, hitches, you name it, we've got it. And a huge selection to choose from. Come visit one of our many showrooms across the state. We're H&H. &H. That Missed one. that one. We're welcome back here. We're calling the action. <laughs> we're here we're playing conference. for money, man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the young lady to our left down here has been uh, shooting it well, and she's made all of them, I think. How about that? Uh, is there one more that she got to make another one? Yep, she made it. That's it. She wins. Yeah. And so, that, so for her, 25 just became 50. Yep. How about that? Yes, sir. $50 worth of gas from Samco Express, Express Marks. Marks. There yep. you go. We're going to get them all up here after they're finished. we got another pair that's going to play here. We're playing Samco around the world. It's an old classic basketball game, Grady, where you go you go out on the floor. And, uh, <laughs> and you shoot. Yeah, and you shoot. You shoot basically on each baseline. You shoot a free throw, and you shoot outside the three-point arc, and you got to make all four within 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you make it, you get fifty dollars in free gas if you just just for playing selected at random out of the crowd. You get twenty five dollars worth of free gas. So you're a winner either way. Either way. Yeah. But if you get all the shots around and you win it, you get fifty bucks. Absolutely. Life is a, good. A free gas. Free gas. And fifty bucks in free gas is a good deal. Yes, it is. That'll fill up most tanks. Yep. Most tanks. Most tanks. Yeah. It looks like our second group's getting ready to go here. And uh, the shot. Off Missed her three. first one. Yeah, the one on the right side trying the little short bank shot. Got that one on the second attempt. So now he's made one from each side of those. Yeah, got to have that. Now going to the free throw line, really taking his time. Puts up the free throw, no Missed good. Missed that one. Left side over here, the young man in black puts up the free throw. That was no good. That was a brick. That was a brick. <laughs> free throw made down here on the right side. Now he's got to make a three. Yep, got to make the three. Puts up the shot. Well, off the front of the rim, no good. And the three, no good. The three. Playing Samco around the world yep. here. And uh, the girls were much better shooters. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. Young lady in, in uh, <laughs> blue, and that's it. 45 yep. seconds in the books, and the girls were much better. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to get them all up here and get them awarded with certificates. And, and while we do that, why don't we grab a quick break? Grady can catch his breath. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be right back to tell you who won what and our Sam Co. Around the World Halftime Challenge when we continue here in just a moment on the Friday Night Network. Every day is a great day to stop in a Samco Express Mart. You'll find plenty of snacks to choose from, and Samco has all your favorite drink brands, all nice and cold. You'll find those last-minute light grocery items you need, and a great variety of grab-and-go brands that's sure to cure any case of the munchies. There's lots of candy, mints, and gum, too. Make sure you fuel up before or after the game. With over 30 locations in the area, there's always one close by. Samco Express Mart.
It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Every day is a great day to stop in a Samco Express Mart. You'll find plenty of snacks to choose from, and Samco has all your favorite drink brands, all nice and cold. You'll find those last-minute light grocery items you need, and a great variety of grab-and-go brands that's sure to cure any case of the munchies. There's lots of candy, mints, and gum, too. Make sure you fuel up before or after the game. With over 30 locations in the area, there's always one close by. Samco Express Mart. And welcome back to the Friday Night Network's coverage of the Patrick Ball Memorial Christmas Classic. Uh, the home team, the Eagles, are up 31-17 to at the half over the St. Clair County Fighting Saints. And we just had a spirited round of Samco round the world out on the floor. And this young lady shot the lights out. What's your name? Madison Ingram. Madison Ingram. Now, do you play basketball? Yes. I thought you did because I could tell by the way you, you shot. Are you on the girls' team here? Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, now you're the only one that made all four shots, though, right? Yes. Did you see the guys play? Yes. <laughs> they shot bricks, didn't they? They were terrible. Yeah, they kind of were. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's it mean to a high – what, what grade are you in, Madison? Tenth. So what's it mean to a tenth grader to get 50 bucks and free gas? I don't have to ask my mom for gas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let me tell you how this works. You ask your mom for gas, and then you go buy something else you want. See? I, man, I know how to work all the angles. <laughs> so you tell your mom, oh, Mom, I need about 25 bucks for gas this week. Then, then you can go have pizza or something like that with your buddies. <laughs> so how's your basketball team doing this year? Pretty good, I understand. Yeah, we're doing really good. Yeah? So when do you play again? Uh, we don't have a Christmas tournament next week. Yeah? In so. Hawassi, Georgia. Oh, okay. All right, good deal. Well, listen, congratulations on making the guys look really bad in Samco around the world, and uh, enjoy your free gas, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, you Madison. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to grab one more time out. The teams will be coming back in off the floor, and uh, we'll get you set for the second half. That is all coming up right here. As we look at the brackets, you can see there Aniana has already advanced with a big win, and Hoax Bluff has a half game in the bag, but they've still got to put it together for another 16 minutes. We'll see if the Eagles can pull it off against the Saints when we continue here from the Patrick Ball Memorial Christmas Classic at Hoax Bluff High School, presented by Samco Express Marts here on the Friday Night Network. H&H &H Home and Truck Accessory Center is your one-stop shop for all your truck accessories. Tires, wheels, lift kits, tonneau covers, toolboxes, step bars, replacement bumpers, hitches, you name it, we've got it. And a huge selection to choose from. Come visit one of our many showrooms across the state. We're H&H. &H. Mr. G's is Glencoe's friendly neighborhood hometown grocery. Oh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Gotta get this, this, and this. You'll always find fresh produce. Meat, gotta get meat. And the best meat anywhere at Mr. G's. They'll even cut it to order. Gotta get this, this, and this. Yep, gotta get that. Oh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. You'll find all your favorite soft drinks and snacks, too. That was fast. Check out line, here I come. Thank you for shopping at Mr. G's where we get you out quickly. Oh, thank goodness.
We welcome you back courtside here at Hoax Bluff High School. It is the Patrick Ball Memorial Basketball Tournament tonight presented by Samco Express Marks. Man, I feel like Santa Claus. Yeah, you gave away gas, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and, and one $50 winner, too, Madison Ingram. Boy, she shot the lights out of it, did she? She played, didn't she? Yeah, she did for Hoax Bluff. For Hoax Bluff. Yeah, she was off the team. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there's a near throw away, and it is going to be retrieved and a tackle on the other end. And St. Clair County's got it, and they get the easy layup and the foul. Mm, good way to start the second half yeah. if you're the Saints. You got my pen. I do. You want it back? I do. There you go. Yeah. All right. And we also want to say congratulations, Grady, to the other three participants. Kelsey Otwell, Logan Harp, and Hayden Reeves all won $25 Samco gas certificates. Man. And for the two guys, that's not that's not bad for looking bad. No, because they did look bad. Yeah, they were. I mean, they were pitiful. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> Grayson Beatty made both uh, made the free throw shot, so a three point trip and an eleven point lead right now for the Eagles. And Another steal. There you go. That is going to be Grayson. Uh, Beatty running the floor and getting another basket and a quick timeout taken by Hoax Bluff. Coach, Coach Noah, Noah. Yeah. Yeah. not going to like that, not liking that at all. Yeah, that was not a good start to the quarter, and yeah. it's back to a nine-point game. This is what you call a 30-second tail chewing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations or uh, thanks go out to uh, Hoax Bluff Welding and Fabrication for sponsoring this quarter of our Patrick Ball Memorial Christmas Classic coverage here on the Friday Night Network. Say that fast three times. Yeah, that, that, no, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so just going to be a quick 30-second timeout by the Hoax Bluff Eagles, and they're going to try to settle down here. That's not Hoax Bluff basketball that we normally see, and that's turnovers and mistakes. They just really don't. They don't L Live ball turnovers no. is not in their playbook. No, it's not. So here is Greaves going to work it back up and had the ball knocked out of his hand. And there's another turnover by wow. Hoax Bluff. Three trips, three turnovers, Grady. And uh, that's going to get Greaves a seat on the bench and back in is Contras. Cole Contras had a nice second quarter for the Eagles. Here we go back to the Hoax Bluff pressure. And there's the pass down to Bruce on the baseline cutoff. Comes back outside to Fisher. Now Price has got it. Kick it back out. And Beatty comes back to Price, and St. Clair will reset the offense. Oh, nice drive inside. Beatty, he has lightened it up here in the third quarter. Give him seven points in the quarter. And the Saints on a little comeback here. Yeah, thanks to Grayson Beatty. <laughs> Seven points, that get the lob into two lips. Gonna be misses the point blank layup and the rebound underneath for Price. And here come the Saints. Down seven. A three makes this interesting. Very much so. There it is, Bruce with the three. Counts. Got it. And what a run to start the third quarter by St. Clair County. And some of it's been handed to him, some of them that some of it they've earned, obviously. Yeah. Some really sloppy play early in the quarter. Oh, there's, there's another, another steal. Yeah. Bruce has got it from Stewart. Hesitates, lay it up with the offhand, and he's got it. And another timeout going to be taken by Coach Noah. It is a two-point game here at Hoax Bluff, and who saw that coming? Boy, he'd be mad. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and deservedly so. Full timeout, so we'll take it as well. Hoax Bluff in trouble right now. St. Clair County on the comeback trail on the Friday Night Network. Every day is a great day to stop in a Samco Express Mart. You'll find plenty of snacks to choose from, and Samco has all your favorite drink brands, all nice and cold. You'll find those last-minute light grocery items you need, and a great variety of grab-and-go brands that's sure to cure any case of the munchies. There's lots of candy, mints, and gum, too. Make sure you fuel up before or after the game. With over 30 locations in the area, there's always one close by. Samco Express Mart. Bluff misses another shot. Jay Stewart, though, 
puts it up and in for the Eagles, and they're finally on the board here in the third quarter. It was a 12-0 run to start the quarter for St. Clair County. Got it within two. And here come the Saints again. Bruce outside. That three is short, and it's saved by Braden Hill. In, Contras has got it. Here come the Eagles. Fired ahead for Lipscomb. Makes a nice catch in the easy layup. And back-to-back -back baskets now for the Eagles. They stretch the lead back to six. Now St. Clair County will try to continue their hot hand inside to Price in the lane. Blocked by Lipscomb, and he takes it back away. Loses it on the floor, but rescued there by the Eagles. That's Stewart coming out of there with it. And Hoax Bluff coming back the other way once again. Braden Hill now with the basketball for the Eagles. Going to back it back out near midcourt. Get it to Contras. Lipscomb in the corner inside to Landon Johnson. Misses the short layup. And the rebound saved in there by Michael Fisher. Bruce coming the other way once again for St. Clair County. Hand it back to Fisher. Hesitates. And the opening is gone. So he'll have to get it to Bruce and now get it back outside. Only three minutes into the third quarter, St. Clair County certainly made a game out of it. Grayson Beatty for three, good. And another one for Grayson Beatty, and this time it's a three, and he has just lit it up in the third quarter. My goodness. Yeah, St. Clair County, too, is just really overplaying all the passing lanes, and there's another one. Three-point game. Here comes Bruce. Hand it back outside for Fisher. Are we tied? No. Misses the three. Rebounded by Owsley. Put back. Won't go. And Lipscomb is going to come out of there with it for Hoax Bluff. And Lipscomb gets it back into front court. And the Eagles will set back up shop. Only up by three. St. Clair County closed it to two a moment ago before a little run by Hoax Bluff. And now kind of slowing things back down more to Hoax Bluff speed basketball. What'd you say it was, Grady, like a 12-0 run in a, with a, within a minute and 29 seconds? 12-0 run in a minute 38 to start the third quarter. Braden Hill cut off by Owsley, throws it back outside. Contras will track it down and save the turnover. And now Owsley pokes it away from the backside. Good defense and another steal for the Saints. How about 10 points in the quarter right now for Grayson Beatty? Lighten it up. Absolutely. Price outside for the three. That will not go. And the rebound is claimed by Braden Hill and the Eagles. St. Clair County has made this a basketball game once again, though. Hoax Bluff with only four points in the quarter. Stewart tries to change that. Three from the outside is too strong. And now we're going to get a push off from behind on Lipscomb. So the Eagles have not looked like the same team that we watched in the first half, and St. Clair County, for that matter, hasn't either. <laughs> they've improved. Yes. And, and the improvement, Grady, I mean, they've shot it well, but it's, all, you know, it's come off of playing good defense. Yeah, they've done an excellent job with that. In terms Take of those points. And you got the hot hand with Grayson Beatty and combine that with good defense, and it's been a nice formula for success for the Saints. Hoax Bluff picking up the pressure here. I like the move. Oh, uh, he was a, over and back. They didn't call it. Yeah, now he did. does. Late yeah. whistle, but it's there. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. It was. Now, Oaks Bluff leading by three. We'll set up shop again, see if they can get a good look. Johnson double teamed as soon as he gets the ball. Hill finds Lipscomb down on the baseline, moves with it, fouled. So the foul on St. Clair County. And now into the ball game. Bruce is going to check back in. Price, after picking up the foul, will have a seat for St. Clair County. <clears throat> oh, and there's a zig and a zag and another turnover by the Eagles all the way as Bruce makes the shot, draws the foul, and he will get to the line and he can tie this thing up. How many times do we see that, Grady? Yeah, you make a mistake on one end and, and go make another one. one on the other. It's like it's like being dumb and dumb once. You got to do it twice. Yeah. I've done that a lot on the golf course. <laughs> and Hoax Bluff doing some substituting right now. Braden Hill going to have a seat. Landon Johnson. It's back on the floor, and the Eagles have seen a big advantage at the half evaporate. And really, for St. Clair County to get back into the game, Grady, it's it's about had to go down that way. Because, you know, we talked about coming back on Hoax Bluff, and there's an offensive board. And a foul, and going to the line will be that man who has been on fire, Grayson Beatty. He can give the Saints the lead. 
He's going to shoot two. Well, think about this. It was a 21, or make it 31-17 lead at the half. 14 points. And now it's tied at 35. So Hoax Bluff has been dead cold from the field. Yep, and St. Clair County has been a red hot, especially Grayson Beatty, who makes both free throws. At 12 for him in the quarter. 12 in the quarter. Wow. And St. Clair County, for the first time, leads. Playing catch-up ball. Yep. Hoax Bluff is. Yeah, they, they haven't had to all night. They've started the game on an 8-9-0 run and haven't looked back until... St. Clair County has just so thoroughly dominated this third quarter. Let's see how the Eagles respond. Contras and Teague. Teague going to go baseline, loses the ball. Boy, and St. Clair County's quick with their hands. Yeah, here is Fisher coming the other way. A little move too high, and the rebound by Owsley. Kick it out. Grayson Beatty is open for three. That one will not go, and Contras has it, loses it, gets it back, and is fouled. <laughs> But he was going for the basketball. Yeah, he got it. You know, he had it once. Yeah, he tipped Contras, it once. Yeah, Contras had it out yeah. with the late foul there. And Hoax Bluff will have it. Down by one. What a comeback here by St. Clair County. 12 for, for Grayson Beatty in the quarter. Four for Bruce and three for Heflin. That's the score. I guess basically Ben Beatty who has been the driving force. And he's been the beneficiary of getting some steals and uh, getting fed the ball, but he's also knocked down a whole lot of shots. Got some moisture over there where bodies were on the floor trying to dry that up. And there was a bunch of bodies on the floor, there too. There were. Man, they were uh, spread all over the place. Why is it every time I look over at the screen, I see a bottle of wine? Well, just timing. <laughs> it tells you something. You need to go by Mariella <laughs> and pick you up a couple of bottles and take to the house. Now, that referee doing that mop, That'd yeah. make a great gift gift for the internet, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, just it? a little yeah. back and forth mop action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Hoax Bluff down by one. Eagles going to try to reclaim the lead if they can here. This has suddenly turned into quite a basketball game thanks to the run by St. Clair County here in the third quarter. And there's, there's another, another knock away. And we just don't see this out of Hoax Bluff. Heflin gets it over to Fisher, and here come the Saints. And didn't see it out of the Saints at all in the first half. No. I mean, it's like a different team on the floor. That's some job of coaching at the halfway point. Yeah, Inside. I don't know what Coach Connor told him, but it worked. Beatty with the shot, draws the foul, goes to the line to shoot two. He'll try to pick up his 13th and 14th points of the third quarter. So if I'm Coach Bluff, I'm thinking, let's shut Beatty down. Take our chances with the other four. Because he has torched them here in the third quarter. Well, if you're Hoax Bluff, Grady, I think the first thing you got to do is quit giving the basketball away. Yeah, they really, you know, you, they're just not playing tough with the ball. They're getting they're getting it knocked away too easy. Yeah, I don't know how many turnovers they've had here in the third quarter, but it, it is on up eight, seven, eight or more here in the third quarter alone. They're not what I'd call live ball turnovers, meaning mistakes. They're ju it's just takeaways. Yeah. St. Clair County getting their hands in there, knocking it away, and then reacting to the basketball. Well, we're not accustomed to seeing Hoax Bluff do that, so you have it taken away from them. Yeah, the ball security is usually good. Num normally a much more secure handling the basketball. St. Clair County's kind of going to a little trap, and it's really given this offense of Hoax Bluff trouble. Landon Johnson, quick three from the outside is good. Boy, his club needed that. Yeah, they did. And that's Landon's first points of the second half, and we're tied at 38. Oh, there's a zig and a zag, saved, but right in to Teague and the Eagles. Now Teague about to be triple team, and he throws it away. And here comes St. Clair County. Bruce has got it, fired over in the corner. Fisher spots for three off the rim, no good. And a foul called in there, and that's going to go against Garrett Sanders. And Hoax Bluff will have it with a minute two to go in the third quarter. And the Eagles will try to reclaim the lead. They were up by 12 and found themselves down by three before a big three by Landon Johnson. Number one in 4A, Aniana, undefeated, awaits the winner. Tomorrow night, we've got it for you right here. That championship game set to tip around 7.30 or so. 
Greaves outside for three. Good. Donovan Greaves just steps up and hits a big three-pointer for Hoax Bluff. Now St. Clair County back behind. And here is Grayson Beatty. Kick it outside. Unselfishly Heflin with a three short. And the rebound tipped away by the Saints, and it'll be Hoax Bluff basketball. Uh, I think St. Clair County's kind of gotten out of their offense a little bit now. Well, if, so you know, the three ball got to going for them, and, and they quit looking for shots. They're yeah. just looking to throw up threes now. And sometimes you expend a lot of energy when you mount a big comeback and get on a big run. Sometimes you have to kind of regather yourself a little bit. We'll see if that's the case. If we'll have another quarter to play, Hoax Bluff's going to hold for the final shot of the third quarter. You can bet money on that, barring a turnover, which we've seen plenty of this quarter. Now Landon Johnson's got it. He almost dribbles it off the back of a teammate's leg. Puts up the three. No good. At the end of three, Hoax Bluff leads it by three on the Friday Night Network. Life happens everywhere, like it never even happened, only happens here. The cleanup and restoration specialists at ServPro. Forsyth Builders are passionate about what they do. A full-service contracting firm, Forsyth handles a variety of jobs, including industrial, commercial, renovations, and new construction. Forsyth has become a leader in construction management and has constructed or made additions on a number of area businesses like Noble Bank and ABS Business Systems, additions to Aniston's Country Club and f and Bank. Remember to make Forsyth Building Company your first choice for quality construction. Final quarter of the night coming up. Patrick Ball Memorial Christmas Classic here at Hoax Bluff High School presented by Samco Express Marts. I'm Grady Sapp alongside Jim Jacobs and what was a 31-19 halftime lead, a 31-17 halftime lead for Hoax Bluff evaporated in that third quarter. The Eagles were able to reclaim it on a three by Donovan Greaves at the end of the quarter. And now we go to the final eight minutes, and it's anybody's game. Bruce outside for St. Clair County misses the three. Owsley with the putback. Won't go too hard on that. And tipped back out now. Hoax Bluff has got it. Braden Hill tipped it out to Greaves. Greaves will give it to Stewart, get it right back. And the Eagles going to pull it out, Jim, and try to settle into their style of basketball. Yeah, so. and I think that's what they want to do too, Grady. It is, but, Ho but St. Clair County's changed their defense. They're going into more of a trap as Greaves puts up the three. That won't go. Owsley with the rebound, and that seems to have given Hoax Bluff a lot of problems. The more aggressive defense by the Saints. Here is Heflin for three. Nope, short. Owsley tips it off and gets it back. And outside look is good Dang. for Fisher. That's a two-pointer for Michael Fisher. St. Clair County, when they get rolling, they can shoot it. Yeah, they can. Actually, that was a three-pointer by Fisher. Yeah. And we're tied once again. Braden Hill inside misses the short one. And Owsley with the rebound. Now well, Bruce has got it going inside. And uh, stumbling, losing his balance. I thought he walked, but he gets fouled, puts up the shot, makes it. And, of course, Grayson Beatty to the line to try to add three more to his total. Well, that makes two of us that thought he walked. Yeah, he did. He either walked or he got fouled before the shot, yeah. one or the other. Yeah. But the foul was called on the shot after he had walked, so it shouldn't have been. Yeah, it's his night. Yeah, it is. Merry Christmas, young man. Yeah. <laughs> take, got, take the gift. Got 20 on the night and uh, actually can make that, make that 22 on the night and now has 23 on the night. And now St. Clair County back up by three. Let's see what the Eagles can do. And Greaves makes the basket. And In the arm. Gets a chance to tie it back up. Good work by that young man. Yep. St. Clair County outscoring Hoax Bluff 21 to 10 in that third quarter. 14 of the 21 coming from Mr. Beatty. And there you see the young man, a good look at him. So yeah. he gets ready to toe the line and try to knock down the three. Donovan Greaves makes it and give us a tie game another time. Thanks again to Anthony Goodwin. Goodwin Heating and Air Conditioning for bringing you our fourth quarter coverage. 
here from the Patrick Ball Memorial Christmas Classic. And Beatty going inside, taking it aggressively to the hole. Gets fouled. He'll get to the line and shoot two more. Hope you enjoy what you're seeing tonight. And if you do, hopefully you'll be back with us tomorrow night. We should be here about the same time, around 6 o'clock. Consolation game tips and then the championship game. Beatty, another free throw. He's got four in the quarter. <clears throat> and now St. Clair County back on top another time. Makes them both. He hasn't missed much in the second half. Mm. Now Braden Hill outside. Well, I guess him. that was an incidental buzzer. I think so. Landon Johnson is going to be fouled. That one's going to go on Fisher. Well, I tell you what, St. Clair County has been a tale of two teams in this game, hadn't they? They really have. The team that started and the team that came out after the half. Vast difference in the two. Big time. Of course, you could almost say the same thing, Grady, for Aniana in the first game. Yeah, they, they really kind of turned it on and, and got it going in the second half. They didn't play well in the first half, and they trailed for the better part of three quarters of that basketball game before they got control and asserted themselves and hung on at the end yeah. to win by three. Well, they took Springville's best shot. It's like I said earlier, we saw the eight count in that game. Yeah. You know, down for eight and got up and won. Yeah. This, this one's been a little different in that St. Clair County's just come out in the second half and, and they found a way to hustle and get turnovers and takeaways and convert them into points and you know, Hoax Bluff's been a little cold. Yeah. Well, it's, it, you know, it's, you're talking about Aniana, it's a long season, and you're going to have nights where you got to win that way. Yep. Finger roll for Landon Johnson. Good and job going to the to the bucket. He's had a very good night for Hoax Bluff tonight. Has Johnson, ties it another time. Who's going to blink first here in the fourth quarter? Bruce cross-courting it over to Price. Inside to Beatty at the free throw line. Give it back outside. Bruce, shot is off, and Bruce fights for it, and we're going to have a timeout to save the possession by Coach Connor, and it'll be St. Clair County basketball when we come back. Tie ball game here on the Friday Night Network. Every day is a great day to stop in a Samco Express Mart. You'll find plenty of snacks to choose from, and Samco has all your favorite drink brands, all nice and cold. You'll find those last-minute light grocery items you need, and a great variety of grab-and-go brands that's sure to cure any case of the munchies. There's lots of candy, mints, and gum, too. Make sure you fuel up before or after the game. With over 30 locations in the area, there's always one close by. Samco Express Mart. Missed a three that missed everything for St. Clair <laughs> County. Greaves comes back. That three finds the bottom of the net. That, that, that hit everything. Yes, it did. Swish. And Hoax Bluff back on top in this one. Boy, that's what you want to do out of a timeout. You yeah. want to come out, run something, and just make it look miraculous, you know? Yeah. Now St. Clair County trailing again. These two teams have been back and forth since that third quarter comeback by St. Clair County. Bruce driving it all the way along the baseline gets the soft roll. Daniel Bruce with the basket. Pulls his team back within one. Greaves made the last one. Gets it back out. Oh, away. almost another steal. Got Landon Johnson coming down, and now it's going to be it. a steal. Yep. Forgot about the behind the defense, and Fisher oh. lost control. Got it back and laid it in. You know, Grady, he didn't travel, but a lot of refs would have called that. Yeah. Here goes Landon Johnson trying to answer, and he's going to miss the shot and draw the foul. You go to the line and shoot two. I am so impressed with St. Clair County's ability to create turnovers. Yeah, they have um, 
It's just quick hands. It's just quick hands, and we didn't see that in the first half, but, boy, have we seen it here in the second half. Boy, Coach Connor must have lit them up at halftime. I believe he did. Landon Johnson misses the first. He can still tie this thing back up with a made free throw. Second free throw is good. We're tied another time. Here come the Saints trying to retake the lead. And here's Beatty. Charges. Got a little too aggressive that time. Way to step in there, young man. Get that turnover for your team. Here comes your squeegee again, Brady. Oh, yeah. Brady. Every gym needs a squeegee. That's, that's handy. That's a big one, too. Yes, it is. That'll mop up a lot of sweat. Yeah, it will. You know, Jim, it's right now with 4.15 to go in the ball game, I don't really have a sense of who's going to win it. I don't either. I mean, it's... It could go either way, Grady. Yeah, it really can. Neither team has been able to really take control. You just hope Hoax Bluff won't turn it over at a critical point. Yeah. So we can kind of see him play it out to the end. Landon Johnson, crossover move, gets in the lane, shot won't go, draws the foul. Owsley. Boy, St. Clair County thought they had the charge on that one. Yep. And Landon Johnson will have a chance to give his team the lead. Step to the line and knock down some important free throws, hopefully. They're all big at this point. We just go under four minutes left in the basketball game. Yep. Got it. It's hard to believe one little free 15-foot shot can mean so and much. And be so hard to hit sometimes. Yeah. When there's no pressure and nobody in your face. And the soft roll gets them both. Big free throws. Two-point lead. Three-pointer. Won't go. Landon Johnson clears the rebound. And host bluff. If they can get it to front court, we'll have a chance to extend the lead. <laughs> and, boy, if they if they get a, a two-possession-plus lead, Grady, they're going to be hard to deal with. Well, the shot inside, no good, but Jay Stewart going to draw the foul. And now Coach Bluff having some success working it down in the paint and getting fouled. Yeah, St. Clair County's just not staying on their feet. They're, they're reacting to the basketball and the shot. And That's what the Eagles want you to do. You bet creating foul trouble. Jay Stewart trying to get his third and fourth points of the night, and he could make it a two-possession game. Makes the first. Young man eyeballs the basket and knocks him down. Knocks, knocks it, it down. down. Got one more coming up. Makes them both. Got it. So four free throws in a row made on consecutive trips down the floor for Hoax Bluff have staked the Eagles back on top now by four. And there's Bruce. He's going to be wide open. Oh, the defense recovered. Now get it inside to Beatty. A little offhand shot won't go. Gets it back, puts it up, draws a foul, gets the baskets. Man, that's big for St. Clair County. And uh, just like that, he's got seven points here in the fourth quarter. That young man has had quite a half. He has. He's had a game in the three and a half quarters. Uh, a quarter and a half, I should say. Grady, let me mention Ace of Gadsden. Mm -hmm. If you're into, you know, have a have a child that's into cheer or tumbling or any of those kind of things, they, go see RJ and his wife. They are great people. And they work with a lot of the high schools as there's an, almost a turnover. A big save. And now there is a tip and a near turnover again. And the shot up and no good. Well, he did everything but make the basket. Yep, that was a good uh, drive by Picture Ashton perfect. Village. Picture perfect. 
Anyway, go see Ace of Gaston. You can check them out online. They've got a website. They're also on Facebook. They are really nice people. Work with a lot of the cheering squads mm -hmm. from a lot of the high schools around this part of the, the state. Ashton Gulledge cannot make the free throw. Now, we're here tomorrow night. And then next week, you make the trip to the beach with White Plains. Yep, Sandestin uh, Hilton Beach Blowout Tournament yep. down at Freeport High School. Got audio-only coverage of those games starting at noon on Wednesday. And the second free throw is good. Who are they playing? Did, did Chris Bayside. Take? They're playing Bayside. Bayside Academy. Yep. And uh, I will have uh, partnering with me Shotmaker. Shotmaker. Russell Brown yeah. will be on the uh, color for me down there in the beach. Beatty outside for three, good. We didn't pay him too much for that, did we? I uh, hope not. Hopefully, <laughs> only if you paid him anything. <laughs> Actually, they ruled that a two by Beatty, but it was good, and it's a one-point lead for Hoax Bluff. And a timeout on the floor right now for both teams to regroup. We've got 2.42 to go here on the Friday Night Network. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds, and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln, for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. It will be Hoax Bluff basketball clinging to a one-point lead here at Hoax Bluff High School. Patrick Ball Memorial Classic here, the seventh annual Brought to you tonight on FNN by Express Mark, or Samco Express Mark. And trapped out there is Jay Stewart. Ball taken away by Bruce, taken back away by Stewart. And timeout taken by Coach Noah and uh, saving the possession there. Good, good timeout by him. As, yeah, that uh, young man should not have slammed the ball on the floor like that. <laughs> you can get in trouble over that, yeah, Junior. Yeah, you get a te technical foul and a heartbeat you on sure there. Can. You sure know, can. That's just good defense by St. Clair County, aggressive defense. Okay, Grady. Yes. We've been scolded. We have. Listening to your broadcast, they are the Aniana Redskins, not Indians. I know. <laughs> I corrected it. I corrected it. I saw that later on. Just got in a bad habit there. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Sorry, Barbara. You know, it, it's not like we do the Eagles every week or the Patriots every week. You know, it's somebody different every night for us. So it's easy to do, but, hey, you, you should get it right. We think we're professional. Well, we do. We try. We try. I don't know why I got Indians stuck in my head. But <laughs> I know. They're the Redskins. And I did correct that later in the game. You did. But I didn't want Barbara to think we weren't paying her any attention. No, we are. And we apologize, Barbara. I do. And there's a miss and a tip and a miss and a tip. And now put back by Landon Johnson. How about that work on the boards by the Eagles there? And Hoax Bluff. Well, they haven't put the points on the board. Did they wave it off? They must have. No, he's setting one, so. Yeah, they need to. Well, they still haven't put the points on the board. Well, it's either got to be one and points or one, or and, one, one. and one. Well, they made one shot. And so they, that's got to be the clock. Uh, it's just. All right, now they've done it. They corrected it. Okay. okay. Well, that's messing up my score sheet when y'all don't put it on there immediately. <laughs> that's like calling Aniana the Red Indians instead of the Redskins. You, you're too used to our normal clock keeper. Yes, and there's a tip away by uh, Hoax Bluff. Who is about as close to perfect as he, you can get. Mr. Montgomery's pretty darn good, yeah, isn't he? He's about as close to perfect as you can get. Yeah. 
but certainly meant no disrespect to Aniana. Outstanding basketball team. Of course, Coach Cruz, a, a friend of ours from days gone by, and certainly glad to see him having success there with the Aniana Redskins program. I asked him when I saw him earlier tonight, Grady, mm -hmm. I said, how do you, how do you go from a, an assistant's job to coaching the number one team in the state? And he looked at me and he said, dang if I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to question it. Oh, good trap in the backcourt and a timeout again by Coach Noah and the Eagles. Is, Jim, the St. Clair County defense in the second half has given Hoax Bluff fits. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a full timeout, so I guess we can take another one here and catch our breath as we're getting ready for the final minute, 46. It ought to be a fun one here on the Friday Night Network. H&H &H Home and Truck Accessory Center is your one-stop shop for all your truck accessories. Tires, wheels, lift kits, tonneau covers, toolboxes, step bars, replacement bumpers, hitches, you name it, we've got it. And a huge selection to choose from. Come visit one of our many showrooms across the state. We're H&H. &H. As we get ready for the final minute, 46, Hoax Bluff had to take the timeout. Coach Noah taking it to save that possession as that St. Clair County defense. The Saints have really stepped it up here in the second half. It's paid dividends, but right now the Saints need another defensive stop. They're down by four, and uh, we know that Hoax Bluff can bleed some clock if they get things kind of settled in on the front court side of things. Eagles will have the basketball, and again, St. Clair County trapping in the backcourt, and Hoax Bluff has yet to get it in the front court. Now they do. Ooh. Stewart foul. Was he on, did he foul or was he on the he line? Was, he was fouled. He, he was tiptoeing near the line. Yep. It's right here in front of us. Yeah, and that was the foul whistle there on Garrett Sanders. He's number 21. He goes to the bench. He may have fouled out. Again, we, we don't post fouls here, so I can't tell you how many he has. I can tell you that Jay Stewart is at the line, and I can tell you that this is a two-shot opportunity. And he makes the first. In fact, they're all two-shot opportunities now for Hoax Bluff as St. Clair County is into the double bonus. And Stewart calmly sinks them both. He's got four in the quarter, and Hoax Bluff now has a six-point lead, and that's starting to be a problem for St. Clair County. Yep. About to go inside, 90 seconds to play. Yep. Going to have to hit some shots if you're the Saints. I bet they're going to be looking for 22, Grace and Beatty, and I bet Hoax Bluff is going to try to cover him like a blanket. And it's something they do pretty well, yep. so. Here is Fisher trying to get loose. Baseline, lob it back across. Got Bruce out there, open look for three. And that's short. Landon Johnson will clear the rebound for the Eagles. Long pass ahead for Ashton Gulledge, got away with a push maybe, puts up the shot, no good, tipped up, and Lipscomb had it, knocked out of his hand, here comes Bruce, St. Clair County coming the other way, got it in the hands of Beatty, and the blocking foul gonna be called on Hoax Bluff, and Grayson Beatty to the line to shoot two as Braden Hill picks up the personal. I know you gotta play defense there, Grady, but why foul? I mean, the worst he's gonna do is make a layup. Yeah, now you're putting him on the line, letting him shoot. And the clock's clock not running, yeah. yeah. You just don't want to do that. <clears throat> Not with a six-point lead. And and really that time, Ashton Gulledge got in deep. Can't blame him for the shot. He was point-blank range. I don't know that he expected to get that open down under there, but St. Clair County did a really nice job collapsing and, and contesting the shot. Beatty, of course, knocks down the free throw. That's 11 in the quarter to go with 14 that he had in the third quarter. And he makes them both. And there's the trap defense and Greaves is in trouble. Tied up, possession arrow though belongs to Hoax Bluff. And if the Eagles have got to find some way to get it up the court. They may have to try a long pass or something, but that St. Clair County defense is just 
collapse in anything. Boy, yeah. and if you're Aniana watching this, you know exactly what you've got to do against them tomorrow night. Yep, and there, that's how you beat it, cross court it and get it into Greaves. And St. Clair County's got a foul, they do. And that'll put Gulledge on the line to shoot two. You know, Coach Noah, if they get out of here with, with this one, Grady, first thing he's probably going to say when he walks in the locker room, mm -hmm. guys, we got we to gotta do a better job taking care of the basketball. Micah Gilbert's going to check in the game now for St. Clair County. Yeah, they have really had the turnover bug in the second half. It has bit them and has been a problem. And credit St. Clair County. They have played a heck of a game here in the second half, and what a comeback. Absolutely. Absolutely. Greaves makes the free throw. That now is a five-point lead, and misses the second. So St. Clair County with 45 seconds to go. Works it up quickly and into the ball game, and short on his three-point attempt was Gilbert, and Landon Johnson with the rebound, and St. Clair County's got to try to get to him, and he's going to find a wide open Hayden Lipscomb. Dunks it. Wow. Slams it home. Hayden Lipscomb. And that might be the exclamation point on the ball game for the Eagles. I was going to say you could warm up the Victrola. Now you can crank it up. Fisher misses. The rebound comes out for Gulledge. He's fouled immediately. Goes back to the other end. And he will shoot free throws. And the Eagles have survived a, <laughs> a, a, a quarter, third quarter collapse. But, hey, give them credit. They collected themselves. Coach Noah got them settled back down. And then they played basketball. And they're going to get the win here. And going to play in the championship game of their tournament. Which is what you want to do when you host a tournament. Yep. You just want to be around at the end. Gulledge misses the first free throw. And, of course, this one's a very important one in this community because of Coach Ball. Yep. Makes you'll, hear, you'll hear all about that tomorrow night. St. Clair County, gallant effort, but it's going to come up a little short. I, Bruce, think, I think we'll see them in the Conte, Grady. What do you think? I think so. Bruce makes the three-pointer from outside, and... That draws it back to a five-point game and a timeout by St. Clair County. So it's a two-possession game, still 13.8 seconds. We've seen stranger things. Uh, we have seen uh, one a few years ago that was, I think, from down by eight with 19 seconds to go and came back and got the win. Yep. If you remember that game. I do remember I, it. That was, uh, I, that was a, I've never seen one quite like that. Unbelievable. It was. And so... I think Sachs was involved in that they one, were. weren't they? They were, and uh, White Plains was involved in that one. And Sachs came out on top. So the full timeout taken, we're just keeping it here at 13.8 seconds. Either St. Clair County will get the quick steal or they're going to do the quick foul, and Hoax Bluff will have to go shoot free throws. Yeah, you got to do everything you can to extend the game. Yeah, absolutely. Still a five-point lead, so it's still a two-possession game. And right now, if you're Hoach Bluff, just get it in. Get it in and, you know, make them foul you. And then go make free throws. If you're St. Clair County, you got to watch for the run out and the deep ball. Landon Johnson. Looking, looking, looking. And can't get it in now. Lobs it in. Finds Greaves. Finds Layden Lipscomb on the other end. Foul as he makes the shot. Hayden yeah. Lipscomb, and that will certainly do it. That'll seal the deal. No reason for St. Clair County to foul anymore now. No, nope, this one's in the books. It's a seven-point game with only 10 seconds to go, and Lipscomb can make it eight. Folks heading to the exits. And Lipscomb does just that. That's his fifth point of the quarter. And the official allowing a late substitution here. And Noah, Coach Noah saying, get back, don't foul. And there's a block by Landon Johnson on Beatty. And he's going to run out the final 10 seconds. It is a 67 to 59 win tonight for the Host Bluff Eagles. So they get the number one team in the state tomorrow night, the Aniana Redskins here at home at 730. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see that, that basketball game, Grady. Uh, you know, a couple of quality teams. They play differently. A lot of athletes on Aniana's squad. Not to say that there's not here on this Hoax Bluff team, but I think Hoax Bluff has got to do a better job taking care of the basketball tomorrow night because Aniana's not going to let them get up and breathe like St. Clair County did. No, they will not. That's a 
That's going to be a very good team that Host Bluff faces. But you know what? That's a good measuring stick. Where are we at? You'll find out pretty well on that one tomorrow night. You are absolutely right. For our entire crew, for the guys on the camera, for Jake producing down on the sidelines here, for my partner in broadcast, Grady Sapp. Hopefully you'll join us tomorrow night. We'll be back on the air around 6 o'clock with the third place consolation game. Wouldn't surprise me to see two of the teams we saw lose tonight in that. They'll have to come back through the winner's bracket tomorrow to make that happen. And then, of course, the championship game. And those those plates are set. It'll be the ho homestanding Hoax Bluff Go uh, Eagles and the Aniana Redskins. 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 Red Not skins. the Indians, no. the Redskins. Red skins. Got, Got it. it. Tomorrow night. Hopefully you'll join us from uh, for our entire crew from here at Hoax Bluff, the Patrick Ball Memorial Christmas Classic. Good night, everybody. Exclusive sports production of FNN, the Friday Night Network.